Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop on this very special day. Today is the day that I'm gonna be finally revealing my animatronic Ferra armor version 2.0. And I couldn't be happier because there's a bunch of engineering that went over the months. It took so much effort, but it's finally done. So let's dig in. So for context, I've spent the last couple of years developing this uh, quite advanced costume based on Aviator Ferra from the video game Overwatch. Um, there's multiple animatronic parts, but the centerpiece are, of course, these massive animatronic wings. And that's the focus of today's video. Since there are just so many things to cover and reveal, in this video I would like to focus on the mechanical engineering part. The structural components, uh, what worked, what didn't, um, how to improve things, and uh, lessons you and I can take away from our future projects. Motors are definitely the heart of this whole project. So the first version of my wings were based on servo motors, and they worked fine. Um, servos are really compact and they can lift a lot of weight and I wanted to use them because you can use these Arduino libraries that can help with uh, programming acceleration and deceleration for a smooth motion so it's quite plug and play but servos consume a lot of power. Also they are susceptible to electrical interference and when massive wings depend on them it's not pretty. <laughs> You can kind of think of them like a Segway that's trying to balance itself. Uh, the motor needs to change the rotation many times a second just to stand still and that consumes a lot of power. So that would just eat through the batteries and since I wanted to show off my costume for hours, it was not sustainable. That's why I decided to use something tried and true and redesign everything entirely to use gear DC motors. Motors with a worm drive gearbox like this lock in place when they're not powered, so the batteries last way longer because they're not used at all when the wings don't move. That's why they're also much safer, because if the power gets cut, for example, or some electronics fail, they're not back drivable, so in this case the wings wouldn't just fall down. But mostly it's really nice for exhibition because the wings stay upright even though they're powered down. I went with a design that's kind of similar to my Mercy's because I knew it could support a lot of weight. So Farrah now has two geared DC motors for spreading the wings and two geared motors for lifting them. These motors are the same, but the gearboxes have different reduction ratios. So everything else being equal, the slower moving gearbox will be able to move more weight. My goal is to make the most believable costume wing, so speed is what I'm after. But on the flip side, if during testing you use a gearbox that's really fast but weak, instead of seeing wings raise really fast, all you'll hear is just the gearboxes grinding themselves to death. It took literally hundreds of dollars worth of gearboxes to figure out what's the fastest motor that can handle the load of these wings. Even now, after all this effort, if someone bumps into the wing while it's being lifted up when it's moving really fast, that's a death sentence for the gearbox. It just shreds itself apart just because it's that much torque needed to lift them up. So, yeah. <laughs> but that's just the price of being this close to the edge of what's physically possible with off-the-shelf components. These motors are clearly larger than servos, so that means that the wings themselves needed to be slightly altered to fit them. Honestly, starting from scratch probably would have been easier than trying to make the old things work with a new mechanism, just because it's just additional constraints to already complex problems. However, I did come up with a way that I could use the old wings with the new motors. The most important part was to keep the point of rotation so the wings would move as before. Over the months I made a bunch of different prototypes to find the best combination of features. This is the last version of the 3D printed wing lifting mechanism housing. You can see it has magnet mountable lids on each side, um, some space for wires internally and extra thick surfaces for overall stiffness. DC motors are not aware of their position like servos are, so their range of motion is determined by these limit switches. When it came to wing mounting, the first version was not reliable enough. That's why I elongated the sticks of the mounts, and then I epoxied in a 3D printed socket into the wings, so it would slot in perfectly. This addition also improved the rigidity of the wing, supplementing the aluminum rod that was already there. Now to keep them in place, I used bolts to clamp down the wings to the mechanism through the wing bodies themselves. They're tightened down with these wing nuts that I designed to look like they belong there, even though they are not in the reference. In any case, the only way these wings are coming off is if you rip the bolts out through them. The internal structure is much different from the first few iterations. I also made an entirely new backplate to help with stability and weight distribution. The larger contact area is not only more comfy to wear, it also offers more vibration dampening because there's just more cushioning happening. Instead of the motors being bolted to the backplate directly, now they're bolted to this solid steel L profile, which is heavy but also very stiff. This absorbs flexion much better than the bare aluminum would before. 
and I removed some of the material to save weight. The parts connecting the spreading motors to the elevating motors are also solid steel. <laughs> They also add a lot of weight because the metal is just so thick, but I thought it's necessary to remove as much flexion as possible. I just don't want my work looking wobbly and lame if I can help it. <laughs> this pursuit of sturdiness meant that improvements were needed across the board. Sadly, the design does not allow me to have a waist strap like on the Mercy Wing harness, so I'm stuck with these two backpack straps. These, however, have a stabilizing strap between them to keep the shoulder armor always at the same distance from one another and I made some padding to enlarge the contact area between me and the harness. In addition to structural strength, it was important for me to have this design as modular as possible, um, be it for repairs, replacing parts, or transportation. The elevating motors can be removed from the spreading ones in about 10 seconds, meaning that the transportation and packing is really painless. Um, in general, everything is fastened with bolts and not glue, so if something breaks, I can just uh, print out a new copy of a part and replace it also quite painlessly. Overall, the costume is quite comfy to wear. Um, it's heavy, but the padding makes it quite bearable. I can wear it for around one and a half hours before like really needing a break. In these parts, I'm not wearing the jacket just yet because I'm not exactly pleased with it. I still need to alter it some uh, to make it fit better with the new forearm armor, so um, it's not exactly on point with the reference, but uh, I hope you see the resemblance. <laughs> Looking back, I should have known better that the servos wouldn't work, but I'm happy I remade the whole system and managed to achieve this level of speed with the size of these wings. Honestly, I didn't think they would move this fast in the end, to the point where the choice of materials became an issue. Um, foam is great for cosplay, but for moving parts, uh, not so much. You can still see there's a bit of flexion and wobbliness when they whip around. Um, in the future, I think I would go with more uh, reinforcements inside or stiffer materials. But all the technical details aside, the best part of this project is the fun to wear it. You kind of get to feel like a superhero with uh, stuff happening all over your body with a press of a button, um, you know, motors buzzing and everything, and you just can't help but smile. Uh, plus there's the whole building something with your own brain and hands that's just also so satisfying. This project took so much time and effort that I kind of feel bad that I have no better way of conveying all the joys and also the frustrations that it brought me over the months. But hopefully you guys have a better idea of what kind of things people go through that build such things, uh, be it cosplayers or your favorite DIY personalities and um, basically how the sausage is made, you know? In any case, there's still plenty to cover. I really want to make a video about the backplate and what's under the hood and all the features there. And also a deep dive into the electronics driving this entire beast, because once you see the complex systems that are making it work, I think you'll realize why it took me so much time to actually build it. <laughs> so if you're curious, you know what to do. But in the meantime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>Wow, what a great video, I agree. If you would like to see more of my stuff, I made a lot of videos over the years, so here's a few links for you to click on. Ooh, editing, editing, editing. <laughs>